Hi friends, I am Dr. Rahul Pandit. I am the Chair of uh, Critical Care and Emergency at Sir H.N. Reliance Foundation Hospital and all Reliance Foundation Healthcare Initiatives. We are going to talk about sepsis. This, the World Sepsis Day uh, well, is just around the corner. We basically heard this thing sepsis for a long time. But there are a lot of myths associated with sepsis. And this endeavor is to actually try and clear off some myths around sepsis as well as try and make people aware that sepsis is a problem which needs to be tackled on priority and can be, cannot be left um, at home to be looked after. The patients need to come to a hospital, need to see a specialist, need to see a doctor to actually get them better. So the first myth which we want to talk about today is sepsis is very rare and it will only affect the elderly. That's absolutely not true. While elderly population may be at a little higher risk because of the comorbidities and the age to actually have a more severe form of sepsis, sepsis can actually affect all age groups. So let's not be under the myth that it only affect the elderly. And is it rare? Well, any infection which happens to a body and the body reacts to that infection, that's the definition of sepsis. So sepsis basically is now not defined as an infection to the body, but it's the body's reaction to the infection, which is what basically the sepsis 3 definition that the consensus across the world is now accepted. And it can have effect from a newborn child to a very, very elderly person as well. What happens is that whenever you have sepsis, there is a bacteria or a fungus which is present in your body. It releases toxins and these toxins then affect all the organs of your body. Uh, you may have a low blood pressure, sometimes uh, pneumonia can set in or the primary problem could be a pneumonia. Kidney infection could start uh, having problems with kidney function, you could have uh, decrease in your urine output. Sometimes even patients may present in extremes like very low blood pressure and the kidney is not working at all. So let's not think that sepsis is rare. Sepsis can happen to anybody at any age. If you think that you are unwell, do not treat yourself, see your general practitioner or your physician. And if they advise you to go to a hospital, please come to a hospital. Because if you treat sepsis on time, the recovery is very, very good. The more you wait and linger around and let multi-organ dysfunction set in, that much harder it becomes. And then obviously the mortality and morbidity with that also exponentially rises. So the first myth busted out. Sepsis can happen to all age groups and while it is not very common that everybody gets sepsis with any infection, it's certainly not a rare thing. Hospitals are full of patients who have sepsis or septic shock. The other myth which people um, often carry with them is that you actually catch an infection in the hospital and that's when sepsis happens. Unfortunately, it's not true. In fact, majority of the infections actually are community acquired infections, which we call off, which we call catch outside the hospital. And when you come to a hospital, you get basically diagnosed to have sepsis or septic shock based on your community acquired infection. Yes, it is true that hospital acquired infections are also there. And unfortunately, when you are a patient in a hospital, there is a risk that you may actually contract a hospital based infection which we've also got the medical terminology, we call it as a nosocomial infection. But really, both both the spectrums, it is present hospital acquired where it's community acquired. So please don't be under the myth that hospitals only only carry the infection and only will give you an infection only in the hospital. You could very well contact an infection in the community. So Obviously, whenever we talk about infection, the third myth which comes around and which very often patients ask me is that will this infection spread to other people? Now, let's talk about sepsis. Okay, Majority of the sepsis do not spread across from person to person. However, if you have a bacterial or a, or a, or a pneumonia which is basically causing the sepsis, and it's coming from the lungs. There is a chance that if you are very close to the person who is suffering and within a one meter distance, the person coughs out, there's a small possibility that you may actually catch the infection as well. 
however a blood stream infection a kidney infection a liver infection a abdominal infection uh, despite the patient being very very sick with it it is very unlikely that a healthy person or a doctor or a family member or a nurse or a, or a caregiver will contract the same infections from that patient so please don't be under the impression that sepsis is contagious sepsis is not contagious barring a few occasional conditions where there there may be a bacteria in the lungs which may actually transmit through droplet we call through droplets those are the only infections which may possibly spread from one person to other and if that's the case a simple mask would protect you anyway so the major concern is that when you have sepsis we all get prescribed with antibiotics and the bigger concern becomes when doctors tell that the bug is a super bug or a multi drug resistant bug which means that the common antibiotics which would normally treat that bug are now not acting against it they are ineffective against it that's when we call it as an antimicrobial resistance to that to that organism now antimicrobial resistance actually a lot of it is in our hands as healthcare givers as well as patients i think if we responsibly behave ourselves our drug resistance to these bugs would come down drastically so what are the steps which we should take one not every infection requires antibiotics most infections are viral infections which will self limit so do not consume antibiotics in the drop of the hat because the more you consume antibiotics the more likelihood that you actually would now have a resistant bug in your body remember body skin is completely covered with organisms Uh, we have organisms in our gut. The moment we take antibiotics, we change our gut flora, and we may actually have a resistant organism. The second is, if the doctor prescribes you an antibiotic, make sure that you complete the course. Do not stop the course in between, uh, thinking that you got better. Because an incomplete course again gives rise to multi-resistant organisms and resistance to antimicrobials. The third is inadequate dose. So inadequate dose means. a doctor prescribes a suppose a tablet which is 500 mg and the patient often thinks that 500 is too strong for me let me take 250 mg that's not how it works it is a dose which is given as a mg per kg the doctor rounds it to the nearest possible combination available and gives you a drug so please uh, respect the drug and the dose which is being given and take a full course of that the fourth and most important thing which is very relevant in hospital is that when you are coming to see a patient in the hospital or if you have a visitor in the hospital to see you as a patient make sure that anybody who is visiting washes their hand with a with a surgical hand scrub um, hand rub beg your pardon which is available at every bedside or with clean liquid soap and water and only then they touch it for majority of the time we actually carry a hospital acquired infection from fingers to fingers from fingers to bed and pass it on without even knowing about it hence hand washing or hand hygiene as we like to call it in hospitals the single most important thing which people need to really really recognize it. the question which comes quite often to me and to to rather to many doctors who work in uh, in intensive care in emergency department is that should we get alarm for every infection of course not i think most infections can be treated in the community by a general practitioner or physician you do not need to see any one of us in the hospital for that however there are some signs especially if your blood pressure is being reported low while you are having the infection if you feel that your urine output has dropped down considerably while you are actually uh, having a fever or you are having some sort of infection and it's not as usual as you pass it in the day or an average person passes approximately between 1.4 to 1 2 liters of urine a day if you feel that your quantity of urine has been considerably lower along with an infection that's the time to see a hospital to see a doctor blood pressure low that's the time to see a hospital to see a doctor if you are having breathing difficulty do not sit at home wondering that what would happen please immediately consult a doctor one thing which covid taught us was to see the saturation i think that's a very good uh, pulse oximeter is a very good tool most homes can afford it now because it is available for for 1000 or 2000 rupees if you don't have it at home don't go and buy it just go to your gp and check your saturation because if the saturation is below 90% you need to be treated on urgent basis in the hospital so these are some of the common things which you could remember these are the common common red alerts which i would say that when you have infection if you if you sort of start getting any of these red alerts 
immediately see a doctor in the hospital. They will be able to help you out. Other myth which basically is uh, discussed uh, by the patients who have sepsis is that will it have long term effects. So let me tell you that once the infection is gone, generally there are no infection related long term effects. However, if the infection when it was there, when it was prevalent, if it has caused some amount of damage to your vital organs, for example, if the kidneys were damaged you and you needed to dialysis, a small proportion of patients who may need dialysis for lifelong. So lifelong effects can be there, long term effects can be there like dialysis. However, majority of the sepsis patients recover completely, not requiring to be in the hospital again if their infection is properly treated and they recover completely.